Thursday, August the 22nd, in San Francisco, just catching a plane home from the WestCon, the Western Conference of Electronic Manufacturers show in San Francisco. And out on one of the auxiliary runways, we spotted this uh, super constellation with the strange sign Project Magnet on the tail. I happened to be in the restaurant shortly after that, and two gentlemen, which were obviously pilots, sat down about one seat away from me and started discussing the ship that they had flown in here for part of the National Geophysical Year conference, which uh, seemed to be simultaneous with the Westcon conference in San Francisco. And I was quite familiar with the constellation since I had tested these ships when I was a flight test engineer at Lockheed. And I asked them if Project Magnet on the tail signified the same as Wilbert Smith's Project Magnet in uh, Canada. And the gentlemen uh, were a little bit startled, and they said, why, yes, we're closely related. I asked them if, uh, for old time's sake, I might be able to come out and take a look through the ship. They granted me permission. So on the way in and out, I shot a few photographs. Uh, these are a few from this series. Now, the second shot shows clearly the markings on the ship, the constellation, the tip tanks, etc. The third shot shows a Mr. Crow, C-R-O-W, the gentleman with the beard, standing beside the magnetic anomaly detector, which was in the uh, aft end of the constellation. I uh, struck up a conversation with Mr. Crow, and he spoke rather guardedly that this constellation was a number one of a number unspecified of ships specifically equipped with these extremely highly sensitive magnetometers. He said that the magnetic anomaly detector, which was vertically polarized as opposed to horizontally polarized for the World War II units, which are still classified as secret, had an absolute sensitivity of from 10 to 20 gamma, which I felt was rather remarkable compared to the old anti-submarine uh, detectors that were used in World War II. I pressed him a little bit on the subject, uh, naturally, without mentioning the term UFO, and every answer that he gave me before he finally clammed up indicated that one of the primary missions of this particular constellation, which had been all over the world, was connected with the same thing that the Project Magnet in Canada was searching for. He said that he knew of the work of Wilbert Smith, he said that this uh, was an outgrowth in cooperation with the Canadian government of Project Magnet in Canada. And uh, later, when I made the mistake of mentioning the word UFO, he clammed up almost immediately as if he were on security. This ship was commissioned and paid for by the Department of the Navy. And its cover story, the reason which they give for having this equipment on board, was that it is searching out magnetic anomalies for navigational purposes and that these isometric lines uh, which this ship can determine are then forwarded to the U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey Office where they will eventually go on navigational charts all over the world. But Mr. Crow in this picture, after I had the opportunity to communicate with him for about 10 minutes, indicated rather strongly that the primary purpose of this was for magnetic anomalies coming from above the surface of the Earth. When I asked him if his crew had found any anomalies coming from above, he said yes, very definitely, in the area of Key West, Florida, that when they flew close to the surface of the Earth, they got uh, rather smooth isometric lines. When they flew at higher altitudes, these things were rough, which would indicate to him that at the particular time this mission was flown, the magnetic anomalies were coming from above the Earth. Now the next photograph in this series is a close-up of this uh, anomaly detector, which is fantastically sensitive. The fifth shot series shows the navigator station, this chair on the post, uh, with a lookout for their uh, astro-navigation, and behind it the control panels for the magnetic detectors. The last shot in this series shows a close-up of the bench for the electronic control and charting position for the magnetic anomaly detectors. Another thing which came out of this conversation was that several of our satellites were equipped with heavy water proton progression type magnetometers 
the cover story here again being that they were searching for magnetic anomalies in the Earth's magnetic field, and the very, very obvious inference being that they were searching for unidentified flying objects which in some way disturbed the Earth's magnetic field and gave themselves away in this manner. I thought this was rather interesting. You might add it to your collection of unsolved data. My own conclusion, based on talking with both the pilots and uh, the co-pilot and Mr. Crow, was that they are quite aware that this ship is being used in uh, part of the overall search for the UFO.